Hey folks, Jamie here. Thank you for tuning in. Before we get started, I would like for you to take a moment and go down below and hit the like and subscribe buttons. Maybe leave a comment. If you're really feeling generous, maybe share this video to your social media feeds. What that does is make it a lot easier for other people to find a moment of Tiki. I really appreciate it and it helps out a lot. Thanks. Now, on with the show. Welcome to another episode of Moment of Tiki coming to you from the Lagoon of Mystery, my home tiki bar here in Central Texas. Today, I want to talk about Okolihau, the distinctive distilled spirit of Hawaii. Pre-European contact Hawaiians had a fermented beverage that they fermented from tea roots, that's T-I, not the T-E-A that we make iced tea and steep tea and everything from the tea root, uh, the tea plants were endemic throughout the Polynesian islands. They would bake these roots and the starches would convert to sugar, which they would then ferment into a type of tea beer. When Europeans arrived, uh, specifically in 1790, they brought distilling technology with them and sailors being the drunken lot they are, took some of this tea beer and distilled it into what we know as Okolihau. Uh, Okolihau gets its name from the tripods that were converted into stills to ferment or to distill the spirit. Uh, tripods are big iron cauldrons essentially used on whaling ships to boil down and render the blubber into uh, oil, whale oil for ships. Uh, Hawaii was a huge, huge stop for the uh, American whaling fleets at the time. So once the genie was let out of the distillation bottle, uh, all sorts of experimentation continued uh, from the original tea root beer that was fermented. Uh, sailors and Hawaiians and everyone else involved in the industry started adding whatever else was available as a source of sugar. Since the Hawaiian islands were awash with uh, sugar cane, sugar cane went into it. So you could say that the original uh, Okoli house were uh, a cousin to rum. Uh, when the pineapple plantations came in, they would throw in extra pineapples in there for extra sugar. When Asian immigrants were brought into the Hawaiian Islands to work on the plantations as cheap labor, Japanese, Koreans, uh, Filipinos, Chinese, they brought rice with them. So the rice went into the distillate, the fermentation, which was then distilled. So it would have been similar to a type of Iraq. So, Okoli Howe has had a lot of variation over the decades. <clears throat> At one time, uh, the United States classified Okoli Howe as a distinctive spirit category, like you have bourbon, scotch, rye whiskey, rum, all the other classifications. Okoli Howe existed in its own distinct category. And that doesn't exist anymore. It's just considered a specialty spirit which is kind of a shame. Okoli Howe lost popularity after World War II, um, probably even before that. In the 1950s and 60s, uh, America was awash in really cheap, bad quality whiskeys, uh, bourbons, rice, things like that. So it became cheaper and more cost effective to import these whiskeys into Hawaii and then flavor them with tea, root, and other extracts to produce a bastardized kind of okolehau, which is why when you see uh, Beach Bum Berry's recipes for okolehau, and there's not that many of them, in uh, Beach Bum Berry Remix, Grog Log, things like that, it often says substitute rye or bourbon because in recent memory, that's what everyone believed Okoli Howe to be. By the early 2000s, Okoli Howe had pretty much ceased to exist. 
Uh, in recent years, there has been a movement uh, kind of coupled with the craft spirits industry and craft cocktails to revitalize some of these classic spirits. And this is from Island Distillers on the Hawaiian Islands, Okoli Hau. Uh, for a number of years, it was marketed as Hawaiian moonshine. And they have dropped this from this bottling, which I think is a really good move because moonshine has specific connotations, at least it does to me. Uh, backwoods, uh, corn, whiskey, illegal, illicit, uh, which is not really what a Kohli Hau has been historically. <clears throat> Looking on this bottle, it's 100 proof, which is interesting. From what I understand, most Akoli Haus that were produced in Hawaii were between 85 and 100 proof right in this area. So that's uh, authentic. Uh, it also says at the bottom, uh, cane and tea root spirit. So by virtue of the fact that cane comes first, uh, we can assume that this is primarily a rum-ish spirit, even though it's not classified as rum, with uh, tea root flavoring or perhaps some fermentables added. I reached out to Island Distillers to see uh, if I could get more information and they were not very forthcoming. The tea is grown on the big island of Hawaii, uh, so they get their root grown locally. Uh, the sugar cane is not local to Hawaii, it's imported from Louisiana. I assume, although it's not explicitly stated, that this is evaporated cane juice, uh, which is a convoluted way of saying uh, granulated sugar. Uh, it might not be processed, might be turbinado or demerara sugar, however you want to classify that, but essentially it's sugar that's mixed in, uh, rehydrated and added with the tea, uh, fermented and then distilled. So being that as it is, I think I shall sample some of this. Now I really like the presentation. It's a ceramic bottle with a synthetic cork stopper. Gives a satisfying pop when you pull it. Uh, it's got some real heft. Uh, it's distinctive. I really enjoy the presentation here. Now. Sniffing, um, I smell mostly alcohol, um, kind of rubbing alcohol. It's uh, not terribly appealing on the nose. It's got uh, some significant legs on it. Um, it's, you know, it's coming off as something that's going to be really pungent. which is very different from the, from the mouthfeel. It doesn't taste like a, <clears throat> it doesn't taste like a hundred proof spirit. Not at all. It's um, it's sweet. Um, notes of tapioca, banana, uh, some, some banana, not overripe banana, fresh, fresh banana. Fresh cane. Um, if you've ever, if you're in an area where your grocery stores get sugar cane, you know, little two foot sections, if you ever cut that and sliced it and stripped some of the cane wood out and then chewed on it, you get that sweet uh, release of juices. I, I, I taste that in here. I, I taste cane, a little bit of woodiness. and um, a metric shit ton of sugar. This is exceptionally sweet. Uh, far, far, far sweeter than any uh, spirit that's been barrel aged. And this is not barrel aged. This is not aged at all. Um, there, there's definitely a lot of added sugar in here. I have a nice amount of heat going down my throat and into my belly but it does not drink hot at all. 
that sugar is mollifying that. And from my perspective, now this is just me spitballing and doing some armchair psychology here. Uh, the majority of this is sold to tourists. So when you're getting tourists who are not spirit aficionados coming into your distillery, your tasting room, wanting to taste, ooh, what's this Okoli House stuff? Uh, you're going to want them to have something that's very soft, very approachable. And this is something that's very easy to drink on its own. I mean, it, it, it's sweet. It's not liqueur sweet, but anyone who has had a sweetened spirit that is not classified as liqueur, you'll know what I'm talking about. Uh, so this, this is probably targeted directly at the tourist trade coming in as opposed to craft cocktail, uh, home bartenders, uh, spirit aficionados, uh, people like that. It's really great. I think that Okoli Hau is coming back and I think there are one or two other craft distillers in Hawaii that are revitalizing the category. Uh, and for all I know, it was sweetened significantly back in the day. I don't know that. Um, I just... I, I wish that there was more transparency here. Uh, you know, it may be uh, impractical to have a distilled spirit that is predominantly tea root uh, in origin. And, you know, I can forgive that. Sugarcane is native to, well, not native, but, you know, in Polynesian history, it is a integral part of the Hawaiian Islands. So I can see using uh, cane juice as the primary rum, uh, rum spirit base, distillate base. <clears throat> but you know, I think, I think this could be a lot more. I think this could be a lot more. The flavor isn't particularly bold. It reminds me of a vodka or a gin, not, not a flavored vodka. Uh, more of a vodka that has not had its flavor distilled out. The flavors are very light, very delicate, not in your face whatsoever. Uh, or like a gin that has no juniper whatsoever, just some really light, delicate botanicals, which, you know, let's face it, that's what gin is. It's a vodka with botanical flavorings uh, added to it. So <clears throat> it's an interesting spirit. I really want to like it more. But on its own, it's, it's just a kind of a tourist trap. That said, let's see how this stuff holds up in a cocktail from the classic Kiki era. I've gotten a recipe for Polynesian Paralysis out of Jeff Beach Bumberry's book, Beach Bumberry Remixed. Now this is one of those where it recommends using bourbon or rye instead of okolehau. So this is probably built around one of those flavored whiskey drinks, base spirits. And the recipe calls for three quarter ounces of lemon. So as I've said before, you definitely want to go with fresh squeezed juice when you can. And it also calls for three ounces of orange juice. And as I've also said, don't let the lack of fresh squeezed stop you from enjoying a good cocktail. And three ounces of pineapple. This is a fairly large drink. Next it says one ounce of orgeat. My homemade orgeat right here. Half an ounce of sugar syrup. I am using Demerara. So it'll probably be a 
a little bit richer. Now, there's no probably to it, it will be a little bit richer. Okay, now three ounces of okolehau. Recipe calls for 12 ounces of crushed ice in the blender. So a cup and a half. That's about it. Now we blend. what I would garnish this with. Probably pineapple. Mm. Isn't it pineapple-y? Orange falls into the background. Very icy. Decent texture, but to be perfectly honest, the Akoli How completely vanishes in this. And if you'd put even three ounces of uh, Don Q silver rum in here, much less an Agricole or, or a Jamaican funk bomb, you would know it. I can't taste any Akoli How in here at all. It's not a bad cocktail. Uh, not. It's not a bad cocktail in that it falls into the generic kiki drink category. Um, nothing really distinctive about it. Maybe you'll get paralyzed since this is a hundred proof. It'll sneak up on you. This is sweet. A little bit of tart from the lemon. Got some pineapple, orange fades into the background. Slight hint of Orshot, and that's about it. So, now you know if you've been curious about Okolehau, hopefully some of that curiosity has been sated. It's a interesting novelty, but as far as a must have on your back bar for mixed drinks, probably do better, you know, with almost anything else. It's just not going to stand out for you. But again, it is something of a novelty. Until next time, from the Laguna Mystery, aloha.